What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled people. All right, this story's called Pregnant Karen Tries to Get $150 Worth of Cake for Free. So I have never posted on Reddit before, only listen to posts on YouTube when I work, so please have mercy on me. Let me know if I'm doing anything wrong. I was listening to an r slash entitled people post on YouTube when I was reminded of an entitled Karen from my previous job, and I thought I would share it here for some chuckles for whoever sees this. <laughs> Background. I used to work at a big Midwestern warehouse grocery store as soon as I graduated high school. Let's call it S-Mart. Worked there for almost four years in the bakery department. I had the most amazing team I worked with. Corporate could suck a major D sometimes, but otherwise we may do. There's uh, here's the cast. There's me, little confused me. <laughs> pregnant Karen in her late 20s, early 30s. Awesome manager. In his 50s and he doesn't care about your sob story. Story goes, I was working closing shift one night. Only one of us stays behind after 5 p.m. to clean everything, put stuff away, get custom cakes for people who ordered them, write on cakes, yada, yada, yada. I had worked there long enough. I knew the routine of regulars and I could easily see if people could be trouble. So I just cleaned the floors and was in the back washing dishes and operating our very loud industrial dishwasher. Now for context, picture this. Our bakery. Cake station at the front with a walkway to get into the bakery from the floor where customers are. Double doors at the back for employees only. Next to the doors was a big walk-in freezer. Big mixing bowls, big wooden benches where we were dough and packaged product. Also, a big walk-in oven and proofer all where customers can see us. Next to the cake station is a weird angled wall that kind of hides the back that has a walk-in refrigerator and everything used to clean clean, sink, leech cleaners, etc. Back to the story. So when I'm in the back cleaning, I would occasionally peek around the corner to see if customers were waiting for an employee, then get back to work. It's when I hear an ahem <clears throat> real close. This always scares since I'm in the back with a loud dishwasher, so people have to be loud to get my attention. I turn around and a male customer starts apologizing that he came into the bakery, like five to seven feet walked in, but he was trying to get my attention. I tell him I understand and he goes to stand in front front of the cake station and tell him I can't hear much with this darn dishwasher going. He chuckles and tells me he's here to pick up a cake order. Uh, he gives me his name and a yellow receipt and I happily oblige and go around the weird angled wall back to our fridge to grab the only cake for pickup with his name on a white receipt attached to an adorable princess cake. I go back to set the cake down on the table we put the free cookies on and open it up for him to take a look at. He loves it, says his little girl will love it and he takes the cake. <laughs> takes the cake. Thanks me and heads up front to pay for it. I turn to head back to finish my dishes for the night. I just about turn the corner when I hear, excuse me. I turn around and a very pregnant lady is trying to wave me down before I retreat to my hidey hole. Doesn't look like a Karen. Should be okay, right? Excuse me. I have three cakes that I need to pick up. I've already paid for them. It's common for people to pay for cakes before they're made. They just have the receipt attached to the cake and the customer has a copy as well. It's our policy, especially for expensive or multiple cakes, to pay up front before we make them so we don't get stiff to last minute. I said, oh, okay, ma'am. Give me a moment to check our fridge for your cakes. Uh, could I get the name on that order? It's Karen Rage a lot. Supposed to pick up at 6.30 p.m. I'll be right back. She smiles when I notice her empty cart and also think, I don't remember seeing any other cakes in the fridge. So I walk back to our fridge and walk in. Maybe put her cakes in a different spot from the normal ones. I'm looking, looking. Crap, where are the cakes? I walk out, put on my most calm voice and soft customer service smile and say, I'm sorry, ma'am. I couldn't see any more cakes for pickup in our fridge. Do you have your receipt or an order form? Giving me a dirty look now. Why aren't my cakes in your fridge? I paid a lot of money for those special cakes. Fine. She's furiously digging in her purse and hands me a yellow copy. Can't remember the name of it, but the paper where you write on the white sheet and it transfers to the yellow copy for the customer. Carpet copy. Crap. She got the expensive tiered birthday cakes. Three of them. Each cake is worth $50 a piece. Then I think. Sometimes the decorators put the expensive cakes, especially the whipped icing ones, in the freezer so the colored frosting doesn't bleed onto the white icing. Okay, these are bigger cakes. Sometimes they put them in the freezer so they stay looking perfect. Let me go take a look in there. Smug smirk ensues and red flags start going off. I walk into our freezer, 
said at I can see my breath degrees and stand there in the cold in an average polo, dress pants, and apron looking through the backup cakes for the floor and think, this lady's gonna go to nuclear on me when I walk out with no cake. I stand in the freezer for five minutes, so she thinks I'm doing an intense search of the freezer. Nope, I'm thinking of what to do when I walk out. Tell her I'll call my manager and ask where the cakes are. Yeah, that's what I'll do. If I can get to the back doors, I can be free to panic and call my manager. So that's what I did. I walked out and told her that her cakes are not in the freezer and before I could say more, are you guys that stupid you couldn't even make my cakes on time? I knew I shouldn't have trusted that stupid decorator. She was incompetent and I should have asked your master decorator instead to do it. If you don't have my cakes, you stupid idiot, I want to talk to the store manager and get a refund. I spent over a hundred fifty dollars here and you don't have my cakes okay ding 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 red flag red flag i'm so sorry about this inconvenience let me go call my manager and i'll definitely find where they put your cakes sometimes with special orders like this they put them in another location so they don't get bumped into you better or i'll call your customer service and tell them you're an incompetent tool okay quick walk to the double doors in the back safe for now look up the phone number for our bakery manager? No answer. Call our second decorator? No answer. Call the master decorator? She picks up, a little upset because I called her while she was having dinner with the family, and I hastily explain what's going on. She starts apologizing to me profusely that she forgot this nutcase should be coming in today. She forgot to tell me. So this lady spent an hour with second decorator, with master decorator in the background, with Karen, who ordered three birthday cakes that were two tiers. Decorators kept the white copy with letters at the top, needs to pay, and gave Karen the yellow copy and barcode with $150 bakery goods written at the top. She was told to take the barcode up front, pay, and ask for two receipts. She keeps one, brings back the other receipt to attach to our copy, saying it's paid for, and we have the green light to make her cakes. She never came back. That was over a week ago, my master decorator explained. She told me next to call for Awesome Manager, who is that location store manager. ASAP to the back, put him on the phone. So I did. She told me while she talks to him to go ask this Karen for the receipt that she should have. Awesome manager came to the back. He's tall, bald, and looks like he's been in the army. He's not, but he's seen some crap. Shortly explained the situation and handed the phone over. Enter me, serious face and straight posture, about to throw down this Karen professional gentleman style. I walk up to her. One look at her, she looks like she's about to burst into the Hulk. Looking back at it now, I think it's hilarious because very pregnant. Karen look angry. Excuse me, ma'am. I just talked to a manager. He'll be here shortly. Do you happen to have the receipt for your order? Very smug smirk, half expecting me to actually hand me a real receipt. She hands me the barcode you scan to pay. I'm laughing internally. I tell the lady calmly that this is not a receipt. This is a barcode to pay for a product. She starts to yell at me that I'm once again incompetent and an idiot when I hear the double doors in the back laugh swing open. In steps, awesome manager. Hello? Please don't yell at my employee. Could you please tell me what's going on? She flips from Hulk Karen to pure innocent pregnant Karen. I was just trying to pick up my cakes for my baby cousin and my two other children. We are having a birthday party today and I paid for my cakes and they never made them. I need those cakes or you could just give me these cakes. She points to the half plain sheet cake in our decorator station. For free. I can't spend any more money. I can't work at the moment since I'm pregnant. Blank stare of my awesome manager. Where is the receipt? She has it in her hands. They should have it on their copy. Awesome manager takes the barcode from my hands. Ma'am, this isn't a receipt. Where is your receipt? That's it right there. No, this is not a receipt. This is a barcode that you use to pay for something. If this is a receipt, where's the person's name that checked you out? The time? The date? She starts to stutter and slowly starts morphing back to Hulk Karen, yelling that she needs those cakes for her children, that she's pregnant, and she deserves those cakes now! She stomped her foot. She's throwing a tantrum because she's not getting free 
sweet cake. I look over at Awesome Manager after Karen finishes her stomping, and he looks as amused as I am watching paint dry. Awesome Manager pulls out a card with his name and number for both corporate and customer service for complaints. She takes it, still yelling how we are all idiots stealing. She turns around with her empty card, still yelling how we are all stupid, when she does something I've never seen the like of before. She gives us one more look over her shoulder, pushes her cart over, like tipped over, and proceeds to sprint to the front door. Karen, who looks eight months pregnant, is sprinting like an Olympic runner to the front doors. I'm stunned. Awesome manager looks at me and sighs, I'll be right back. He starts to jog down one of the aisles, calls for one of the boys doing carts outside to look for this lady and what kind of car she's driving, along with a license plate. I'm standing there, customers are looking at me like, what the fuck? And I just kind of give a sorry about that to everyone in the vicinity. I go back to do my dishes, thinking, did I imagine this whole scenario? Did the cleaning fumes finally get to my brain? Awesome manager eventually comes back and asks if I'm okay. I am. He tells me that they have her face on camera. She'll go on the board. We have a board of customers to look out for or that are banned up front. But she had no license plate on her old beaten up truck. We laugh and he tells me of war stories of Karen's that he has had to deal with when he was new. This was nothing for him. He gave me a 15% coupon that is given to employees for my trouble and said if there is any more news with her, he'd let me know. Surely enough, he comes back an hour later when I'm getting ready to leave, smiling. Says, guess who just called back? No way. So this Karen, not 10 minutes after she left, called him back to yell at him that she called customer service and they said he is to give her three free cakes and a refund. His reply was that it was Saturday and the call service is not open on the weekend. He said she screamed and hung up. I've dealt with difficult people, but that was my first Karen and entitled person mixed into a ball of fun. Oh, and if anyone wants to use my experience with Karen on another platform, let me know so I can watch in the fun also. All right, hey, I don't know if you can hear me right now, but I just read your story on YouTube. Crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's a bonker story though, man. Who, who, she, that's funny, man. I, I think pregnant women running is a really funny sight. I think pregnant women doing much anything is a funny sight, to be honest. Um. <laughs> All right, this story's called The Saga of Entitled Leah, part one. I'm from one of those huge families. My Nana, Nana, I don't know, Nana, Plantain, instilled that we should all be close and look after one another, including her sisters. She has two sisters still living. One sister married but never had children. We'll call her Hope. The other married and had multiple children. My dad's cousins. They are the rudest, most entitled people you'll ever meet. The worst of which is Leah. So begins the saga of Leah. While my family is Irish, my Nana's sisters moved to England and had their family there. As Hope and her husband uh, have no children, my aunts and uncles and cousins do their best to look after them from Ireland. Some of us have moved to England so they would actively visit often. Us Ireland-based folks would call often and visit when we can. We spend every new year with them, and when they come over twice a year, we look after them. Entitled cousins live in the same county and never visit, but they don't even visit their own mother who lives next door, so. Hope and her husband are very poor. They gambled their savings on an investment one of the entitled cousins had. He basically forced them into it, and then they lost money, but somehow he didn't lose as much. My side of the family were furious. Shortly after after this, Leah asks Hope and her husband to come on holiday to her second home in France. Leah's parents are coming, and as the dad was ill, they needed more support. Hope and her husband were very happy to, and spent their days looking after the dad while Leah sunned herself. They returned home to a bill Leah had charged them for the rent she would have gotten if the house had been leased during the time they stayed. She invited them so she'd have careers for her parents and charged them. Hope and her husband couldn't afford it. Their savings were gone as Leah's brother's scheme fell through. They had budgeted for the trip, but not for the accommodation. Of course, being the amazing people that they were, they only blamed themselves and spent days in anguish over the debt. Eventually, they called my aunt deeply ashamed to ask her for money, and all hell kicked loose. My aunt phoned Leah and told her off. The collective force of my aunts and uncles, incensed by this injustice, were ready to cut the entitled cousins off. My plantain 
and tried to keep the peace, but it was decided if Leah ever showed her face in Ireland, she would not be treated as family. The bill was taken back, but this was only the beginning. It gets worse. And there's more. Um, and might read more <laughs> next time, because I, I, I read enough today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Leah's mean. That's not very nice of Leah. Uh, Hope and her husband, very sweet people. Uh, Shoot. Also, make sure you wash your hands. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.